When it comes to Taylor Swift, I'm like pretty much every other middle-aged guy in America. I just don't care. I know some of her songs, they're fine. They're not featured on any of my playlists, but I don't hate them, and I don't hate her. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but a lot of folks on the right do. They've decided that Swift is part of an election year conspiracy to secure the presidency for Joe Biden, and the NFL is rigging games in favor of the Kansas City Chiefs to ensure that happens. My IQ just dropped 60 points because I said that out loud. Apparently, Swift supported Biden in 2020 and committed the unforgivable sin of baking some Biden cookies. They look delicious. She has also spoken out for pro-choice causes and candidates. Now, I know, a single young woman in the entertainment industry whose top issue is abortion is supporting a Democrat? <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Sadly, I'm not joking. The Taylor Swift conspiracy is a real thing and it's being pushed by some of the biggest names in the MAGA movement, like Charlie Kirk and former presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy put together this steaming pile of tweets the other day. I wonder who's going to win the Super Bowl next month, and I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially cultural popped up couple this fall. Just some wild speculation over here. Let's see how it ages over the next eight months. Jesse Waters suggested that Swift was a front for a covert political agenda and bizarrely called her a Pentagon asset. The Pentagon has denied this. Really. Now, reasonable Americans pointed and laughed at these guys. I mean, really? The Baltimore Ravens threw the AFC Championship game so that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift can hold hands at midfield and endorse Joe Biden? Do you know how batshit crazy that sounds? Yeah, Lamar Jackson doesn't care about winning a Super Bowl. He plays that way in the playoffs on purpose. He just wants to make sure that Joe Biden gets reelected, as do all the other players on the team and the coaches. We all know how concerned Debo Samuel is about the successful implementation of the infrastructure bill. No way is he going to try to win the game and risk Donald Trump getting another Another four years in the White House. Swift is probably the most famous person on the planet right now. She's approaching Michael Jackson levels of popularity and you don't even have to keep her away from kids. She's in a high profile relationship with Kansas City Chiefs football star Travis Kelsey who is about to play in the Super Bowl. And for obvious reasons the Biden administration is anxious to get Swift's endorsement again, especially considering that the Biden campaign is hemorrhaging young voters. Apparently it's difficult for young people to relate to a guy whose social security number is in single digits, so the youth injection of Swift into the campaign could really help. Speaking of injections, Kelsey did a commercial for the COVID vaccine, so yeah. Well, the conservative brain trust, which is currently being led by a guy on X called Cat Turd, is not having it. Again, I'm not making any of this up. Cat Turd is currently the most popular conservative voice on the internet. This is crazy. The whole thing is crazy and it's making conservatives look absolutely insane. Let me talk real to you for a second. Millions of Americans will vote for Donald Trump this year, but that doesn't mean they're part of the MAGA movement. The actual MAGA movement is getting a reputation as being a bit unhinged and not just because Ben Shapiro is rapping now. Nikki, take some notes. I just did this for fun. All my people download this. Let's get a bill or number one. Okay, that's way worse than I expected. MAGA has shown this proclivity to believe in wild conspiracy theories and it's turning off a lot of people who otherwise might agree with MAGA and Trump on policies. People who might be predisposed to vote Republican don't want their friends and family thinking that they're a few tacos short of a fiesta platter. A conspiracy theory is defined as a belief that some secret but influential organization is responsible for an event or phenomenon. Some other famous conspiracy theories include that the moon landing was faked and filmed on a set in Hollywood, that the Twin Towers were knocked down by the American government in order to take us to war, that the Holocaust was a myth, that the CIA assassinated JFK, that the Earth is actually flat, and my personal favorite, that the world is controlled by disguised blood-drinking lizard people from outer space, and you thought they were just selling insurance. On the right, conspiracy theories abound. There's of course the stolen election myth, the idea that Democrats are running a global child sex trafficking ring, that January 6th was actually perpetrated by the FBI to entrap Trump supporters, that JFK Jr. is alive and going to be Trump's vice president. There's been a lot written about why conservatives conservatives are gravitating towards conspiracy theories these days. One issue is trust. Conservatives in general have lost all trust in American institutions, from the presidency, to the medical system, to the CIA, and to the NFL. 
So they're looking for other answers than the ones they're given by mainstream entities. Answers that fit their worldview better than the ones experts are giving them. Thought leaders on the right like Kirk and Ramaswamy put these conspiracy theories out there where they're pushed by guys like Cat Turd and other alternative media sources and people choose to believe them because they want to believe them. They want to believe that the entire system is rigged against them and Donald Trump. This belief is the fundamental building block of the populist resurgence in America. It's also true that believing a conspiracy is more fun than believing something that you don't like. For example, when you are dedicated to a candidate and you lose an election, it's hard especially if you were convinced that your candidate was going to win. Pretending that your candidate wasn't rejected by a majority of voters makes you feel better. The Democrats did this too when they tried to prove that Donald Trump colluded with Russia in 2016. As humans, we all sometimes make excuses for failure so we don't have to believe that it had something to do with our own faults or weaknesses. Do you hate America? Well, then the 9-11 truth conspiracy is for you. This is one that allows you to put the blame on the people you hate for a horrible act. There were more liberals than you think that hated George W. Bush so much that they totally bought into the idea that he orchestrated the events of the worst day in American history. Because they wanted to believe it. This theory is how we learn that Rosie O'Donnell is dumb enough to melt steel beams. Sometimes conspiracies are created due to a need to understand an idea or event that a person finds too complex or incomprehensible. For a lot of people, it's not possible to fathom that we went to the moon. It doesn't make any sense. So you're telling me that we put some guys in a flying torpedo and sent them to a big rock 230,000 miles away and they came back? I mean, yeah, if you didn't have any knowledge of space travel, this could sound crazy to you. Most of us don't even understand how our TV work. If you didn't know that there was science behind putting an image on the screen, you would use your imagination to theorize how the TV worked in a way that fit your worldview. Many would assume it was magic, or that God was angry and punishing us by putting Joy Reid on five nights a week. One group of conspiracy theorists who it's hard to believe actually exist are the Flat Earthers, people who genuinely believe that the Earth is not round, but rather flat. I thought these people were joking around when I first heard they were out there, but it's real, baby. Are these people flat out stupid? Eh, there's more to it than that. Those who believe things this outlandish want to be different and want to feel special. They're in a special club for special people. They'll put up with the mockery in exchange for feeling like they're part of a group that has some knowledge that the rest of us don't have. That's appealing because it's also a place where you can meet like-minded people who are also part of the club. There's certain traits that conspiracy theorists tend to have that can also help us explain the phenomenon. They tend to be psychologically or sociopolitically disempowered. This is the GOP base in a nutshell. Many conservatives believe that the Republicans in Washington were ignoring them and that the left was running rampant with nobody trying to stop them. They felt helpless Politically. They are people who have experienced social ostracism. From the very beginning, MAGA has been considered by many to be racist and intolerant. They were the deplorables who cling to their guns and Bibles. They were mocked incessantly by political elites. It's important to note that much of the MAGA movement is made up of evangelical Christians who also increasingly believe that they are being rejected from mainstream society. Finally, conspiracy theorists tend to be people who spend a lot of time on the internet. The internet has turned conspiracy theories that were once spread only by word of mouth into websites and videos that can be very convincing. The growing lack of trust in the media has exacerbated this too, and there are plenty of grifters willing to take advantage of that. Alex Jones comes to mind. This is particularly true on Twitter, where a conspiracy theory can make it around the world before anyone notices and is able to debunk it. And they don't believe the fact checkers either, because they're part of the mainstream media and should not be trusted. Well, with the Taylor Swift conspiracy, people are starting to notice, including mainstream media outlets, who have spent the last two days laughing their asses off at the anti-Swifties and conservatives in general. In other words, this whole situation is making you and I look bad even though we may not be part of MAGA and we reject this theory. Taylor Swift is the most beloved celebrity of this generation. She is a role model to millions of girls and young women. She has never done anything that anyone should find remotely objectionable. I don't love it when celebrities use their megaphone to talk about divisive political topics either, but this isn't Jane Fonda hanging with the Viet Cong. I also think there's some jealousy among conservatives over the fact that the vast majority of celebrities are liberal, while we're stuck with Ted Nugent and Chachi from Happy Days. This adds to the sense that conservatives are looked down upon by elites, which we are. But that doesn't mean conservatives should go out and make themselves look like psychos in the name of getting Biden out of office. If you really care about getting Trump elected, you need to calm down and stop with the craze. I'm Dan Joseph. Please subscribe to the channel by clicking the little red widget and turn on notifications. Also, check out my podcast, Dan Joseph's America, wherever podcasts are available.